Thanks everybody for joining today. Um, like I said, uh, we're kind of uh, flying a little bit by the seat of our pants today. So I appreciate y'all's uh, patience while I figure out tech things. <laughs> um, as you know, today uh, we were gonna have Chris Williams presenting. Um, he unfortunately won't be able to join us. So you are stuck with me. <laughs> um, and then of course we always have uh, Mae Jones who is Jones aide, who's wonderful and she'll be in the questions. Um, in the chat, uh, answering any questions that anybody has. Um, so just some, to get through uh, the agenda, we're gonna do uh, introductions. We also have Shang here today who will be um, presenting on the world of bar charts, which we're very excited about. Um, but before we do that, we'll go ahead and get some housekeeping stuff out of the way. And then at the very end, we'll, we'll go through questions. Um, so housekeeping, our next presentation is going to be April 4th, uh, Thursday, April 4th at 1 p.m. Uh, Chris will be walking us through kind of demystifying some things about Tableau Server. Um, for those of you who are Tableau Server admins or even have to sort of manage Tableau Server tasks, uh, sometimes I know when I was learning it, it felt a little bit black boxy. Um, of like, oh, I publish up to this thing, like how does it work? And so I think Chris will be walking us through um, uh, just some of the basics of Tableau Server, maybe some common issues that people see um, in the next month's tag, uh, which will be virtual. Um, so some other kind of housekeeping items just to keep everybody up to date. Uh, Tableau 2024.1 was released. Um, and one of the big things that they started to, uh, that they released for Tableau Cloud is Tableau Pulse. Um, so we don't have a whole lot of time to go into it today. Um, I'm going to send out a summary email um, with just kind of some highlights about Tableau Pulse and what it looks like. Um, but Tableau Pulse is something that has been in the works at Tableau for a while. And so um, they're definitely very excited about that. Uh, I myself have not gotten a chance to kind of play with it just yet. Um, but again, we'll send out kind of some nice to know things um, in our email summary, along with a like the link to the to the YouTube video as well. Uh, next housekeeping item is Tableau Conference is coming up. Um, I'm curious in the in the chat, uh, who all is planning on going to Tableau Conference? If you want to go ahead and uh, type in that you're attending, um, it'll be Monday, April 29th through Wednesday, May 1st. Um, that does mean that Wednesday or Thursday, May 2nd, or sorry, yeah, Thursday, May 2nd, we will not be having a Tableau uh, user group because a lot of folks are going to be coming back from that. And that would that would have been our in-person one. Um, so we'll actually be bumping our in-person uh, Tableau user group meetup to be the first Thursday in May to account for Tableau conference. June. Sorry, June. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is in San Diego. So for those of you who are uh, maybe more accustomed to going to Vegas at this point, uh, they have shifted the location again. So um hopefully you get to go it doesn't sound so bad to be near the beach um in the sun <laughs> and for your conference so uh we have passed the early bird fee but um it is 1650 if you register by monday april 8th and they have kind of like a last minute registration fee as well uh may will post this link in the chat um but yeah i'm curious to know who all is going and um it might be nice to sort of have a little cohort either uh, connecting on LinkedIn or um, uh, I can always send out an email with like maybe some meetup information. I know Chris is going. Um, so it might be nice for those of you who are, are planning on going to do a little Portland meetup uh, at the Tableau conference. Great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing now. Um, oops. Uh, and let Shang take over um, and let him introduce himself as well. Um, we are very excited to have you, Shang, and thank you so much for, for being willing to talk to us about uh, the world of bar charts. You are on mute, unfortunately. Take two. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go. All righty, so hi all. I'm Shang, and 
I'm Shangra Fraina, by the way, and I also go by Shang. So yeah, that saves you a couple of seconds. So today I'll be presenting on the world of bar charts. And through this whole presentation and some working session that I have planned for you all, I'll give you a very brief introduction about me. And then we'll jump on to what exactly is a bar chart. And then the use case, the dashboard I built in for you all, which is like 21 ways to build bar charts, right? And then I have a bonus topic for you all, which is dynamic zone visibility, which we all know since 2022.3 has been the talk of the Tableau world. People are loving it, using it. It's been a part of a lot of workout Wednesday challenges as well. And then certain advanced bar charts that I won't be touching here. And the reason I'll give you once, I, once we are there. And then some useful links and of course Q&A, if we have some time, of course. Now about me, okay, I'm Shang. Shang friend, I also go by Shang. I quickly attached my Tableau public portfolio here, just in case you want to see my nine to five life. Yeah, I work as a lead biz developer at Nike. It's been almost one in year, eight months at Nike so far, and it's been so good, can't tell. Then in general, I have like around eight plus years of experience in the field of data analysis, visualization, storytelling, reporting. And yeah, I, I just love it. Giving face to the raw data is what I've always enjoyed. My hobbies, I love hiking. I'm a sneaker collector. And yeah, I love listening to hip hop music. I like breaking down, you know, the lyrics of all the hip hop music and then the, all the rhyming schemes and stuff. I, I like to do that stuff. Yeah, for some, it wouldn't be that interesting, but yeah, I know. And yeah, Eminem is good for me. So that's that period. But yeah. Let's get to it. What is a bar chart? So yeah, bar chart is basically where you present a categorical data, right? With where which has some rectangular bars that may have heights or length which are proportional to the values that they represent. What do I mean by that? So for instance, this is a bar chart, right? All you would see is like the values here: consumer, corporate, and home office. These are like the categorical values out there. Whereas the length, so this is by sales. So the more the sales, you will, you'll have more length of the bar chart there. So that's the essence of it. Every tool you might have touched on in your life for visualization, I think this is a basic chart that everybody starts off with. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what this is. But then when I started the, the field of visualization, I mean, of course this was the go-to chart, but as I grew into it and explored more Tableau Public, I figured out that there are a lot of ways you can do these bar charts and make them different. So here is what I have built for you, a dashboard, and I've just made it available. So let me just quickly share link with you all in the chat. And it should be available for download as well. Now, yeah, so I have here like almost like total of 21 charts and the touch of dynamic zone visibility on top. So what do I mean by that? So let me get into it. So you can see my browser, right? Emily May? Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Alrighty. So what I mean by this is, so I tried to add some flavor to this dashboard uh, and which is dynamic zone visibility as well. So you can basically categorize the bar charts by the regular variations, progress, or comparison, or you can just do it by all chart if you want to scroll through the list. So yeah, so we'll probably be going through each one of these and I'll probably try to cover all of them in my working session in just a minute. And if time permits, I'm gonna show a very quick demo on dynamic zone visibility and i've also added a link to the official documentation on tableau website here so that you all can play around with it and coming to some advanced bar charts that i probably won't be touching is because they might require more time a lot of data reshaping external data sets a lot of complicated calculations but here are a few of them like radial stack bar chart, radial progress bar chart, tendogram and radial bar charts. And there are many more, to be honest. One good link would be Tableau Magic by Tuan Hong. That could be really helpful for you all. So please feel free to stop anywhere or 
Emily May, if there are any questions, if you can just let me know, because I won't be having visibility to the chat and then we can take yep, it. I'll keep there. an eye on it for you. Perfect. So yeah, let's just begin the working session, right? So uh, I'll just try to go one by one and yeah, I'll probably check time with Emily and May so that I have an idea how much time is left and if I should only cover the more important ones, let's say that. And yeah, that's it. So let's begin. So let's keep this as a base bar chart that I'll be using to replicate and create others. How do you actually create a bar chart? So I just took segment. I will take sales, right? And we are not seeing Tableau from you, Shangraf. Oh, you're not? Nope, I'm still seeing your web browser. Hmm, that is. You swiped over you... to, so if you, if you slow down, yeah, right there is Tableau. Okay, me. okay, can everybody else see Tableau? Oh, guess it's just me then. Oh no. Okay. Uh, looks like um, our attendees can see it. Got so it. I think you're, you're okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. I found the problem, okay. Sorry. Okay, cool. Alrighty, let me just do some quick formatting. Uh, to get the data and ratio right. I'll just remove all the grid lines, everything out here, and then we'll use this copy. Got it, right? Now, let me add this. Let me add some labels. Let me put it out here. So there you go. This is a regular bar chart. We all have done this, right? Now, what variations do we have here? So from this, then I, I came across one cool variation, which was an outline bar chart, just to add a bit more flavor to it. Oh, okay. what just happened? Oh, there you go, I'm sorry. So let me just duplicate this one. So for this, all you would need to do is make the color white, go to the border, add black there, and probably maybe just make the text bold and blue. And let me just make it center. So there you have it. So probably in like 40 seconds, you can have these two ready, right? So this is outline. Now we'll again take a copy of this. Another variation that I have used in a lot of my professional and public dashboards, uh, profile dashboard is basically use thin lines. Because sometimes they add really good effect, but then what to do with the text? This is not visible, right? So cool, no worries. Just do a command shift if you're on Mac or control and select the field here, make it discrete. And there you go. So basically, so what this is doing is it's giving you the bar results out there, but you can add a detail, a number detail in front of it so that the user knows what they're looking at, right? And yeah, probably hide this thing off. Yep. So this is basically what they call is like, Thin line bar chart, which is right there, right? And then we have something with a start line, what this is. So basically you just add a line, an effect basically, a line in front of a bar chart, that's it, which is pretty straightforward. Again, oh sorry, control D. So there is like a placeholder method you might have come across, uh, specifically if you would have tried conditional formatting in Tableau. This is something that a lot of people do. So basically just do something like this, make this a Gantt chart, do a dual axis, and then oh, make it bar. And let me do a synchronized axis. And there you go. So what basically happened was you just basically add an effect of, you know, of, of an outline either on the st just the start of the bar chart, just, just to give an effect, or some people usually do it on the other end to basically provide a gant right over here. So you can do it either ways. And yeah. And then comes my favorite ones, the lollipop chart. I, I really enjoy this one. So it's all the game of dual accesses, to be honest. 
for these regular variations. So, oh, I already have that name. My bad. There you go. So, what do you do with this? Pretty straightforward. Just do a dual axis, yes. right? Go to the second one, make this a circle, right? Let's just do a dual axis quickly. Let me just synchronize the axis. So let me make my first one as bar. Reduce the width, literally nothing, and increase the size of the circle. There you go. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Whatever measure you have, you just duplicate the same measure, do a dual axis, synchronize the stuff, make the, the most extreme one as a circle, one as a line, and adjust your width and the size of the circle, and there you have it. So. There you go. So that's a lollipop chart right there. Now, let me quickly make a curve chart, which is rounded bar chart straight out of this one. How do you do that? You just increase the width. There you go. So probably in like, what, 10 seconds, I was, I spent time on this and within like next 10 seconds, I was able to recreate another bar chart out of it, two variations. And now you can use basically both of them on the same dashboard. It adds some variations but it's and 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 yeah you convey the right message right so yeah so that's this now in this regular variations there's another chart that i have here and i really like this chart i haven't used it professionally ever but in my tableau public i have quite a few times and shout out to andy Kriebel for the tutorial so what is this so let's quickly play around with it so for jitter bar chart what it basically is doing here is every point by a segment is signifying an order and a sales associated with it, right? But then how to get this effect? Sweet, let's do that. So I have kind of, for you all, I have tried to arrange all the calculated fields so that you figure out what belongs to what. Now, the first thing that we have to do is, sorry, it went on the other screen. You create an index calculation. What is an index calculation? It basically is like a row number in SQL. It assigns an incremental value to number of points or the level of detail you have, right? So I put it here, sweet. And then since order is something that we are tracking here, we find order ID. There you go. I put order ID in here. And then we are doing it by segment, right? Where is my segment? We put it right there, right? Now let's do the magic. We do it by order ID because we need every small circle should be an order ID. Now, do you see this? We have a lot of circles here, right? Now, how to create that, that jittery effect, that noise? So there you go. Thanks to Andy Griebel for the trip. This was really cool. So there is this random function, which is like any other random function in any language. It creates a randomness, like a random numbers between, uh, like for your data set out there. And then I'm just taking an average of it. So when you basically put this thing here, see, we're getting close, right? Now let me drop segment to colors, right? And sales was also involved there as we saw. So you get the effect right in place, add sales to size. There you go. Adjust your brightness accordingly. And then, so as to you get some halo effect, increase the size of it. There you go. And you basically have your user ID, segment sales, and then you can arrange your tooltip. So this is your Jitterbot chart. Uh, any questions so far in the chat? Uh, Emily, May? Nope. Just uh, nope. comments about uh, the, the nice effects, the, the randomization. There, I guess there was com one comment from, from Daniel um, talking about the classification of radial charts as fundamentally bar charts. Um, yes. And I, I, my, my comment back was, I think it's, it's interesting because I think I, and maybe this is just my misunderstanding sometimes, but sometimes I hear radial charts or um uh, referred to as the ones that kind of go around that look like the apple fitness trackers sometimes they're yeah. the ones that look like sunburst charts where the height is different so um yeah, yeah it's just an interesting interesting thing to think about that is true 
uh, there are so on my profile, like I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, something like this. Like, so they also go like kind of straight bar chart if you have time series, but they can also go in rounds as well. So they're like different ways. I think this was back from 2020. So yeah, they can go. I, yeah, there are different variations to advanced bar charts. Like there is no limitations. On Tableau Public, there is a visualization with 100 ways to do bar chart. I kind of stuck to 21 because I thought I'll give a working session on the most important <laughs> ones I believe that one can use practically. So yeah. Sure. And there's support too for the jitter chart. I uh, just the ability to show a distribution looks nice. Mm -hmm. So just positive affirmations in the chat. <laughs> yeah. And of course, data ink ratio. Yeah, I'm trying to clean as much as I can, but I have a time limitation. So if you fix all of, I'm sorry, if you fix all of this, that's much better. Like you know, probably all the grid lines off, everything off. And because those are kind of unnecessary and takes your uh, attention off of the chart. So yeah, something to keep in mind. But yeah, that's jitter for you. Now what I have in place is progress bar charts. What are those? Like you want to see track anything by the percent value of it. That's what it is, right? And they pretty much are very helpful and there are different variations and I've tried to capture the bar chart versions of those. So let's try them. So which is the first one? Okay, the regular one already. So first things first, I'll put segment. Actually, wait, I already have this ready, right? Duplicate, yeah. Yeah, let me just put this here. Alrighty, so this thing is already there. We are clear with this part, right? Now. One thing you can do is, what is a progress bar? I need that 100% range somewhere, right? So you can create an ad hoc field or create a calculated field with one in it. That one basically in Tableau signifies zero to 100%. That's what we are trying to simulate here, right? So I do this, there you go. And for average, let me just take a lighter color here. There you go. Now we're tracking percentages, right? So quick table calculation, percent of total, right? And do a dual axis. Okay, sweet. Bars. There you go. But hey, we just seeing 52%. Why? It should be, it's not exactly what we wanted, right? So the quick tip is basic rule of dual axis, synchronize it. There you go. And just hide this thing. There you go. So this is your basic uh, uh, progress bar chart that you probably can create, and you can do it for like anywhere where you really want to track progress out of hundred percent, and can create breakdowns out of it. And yeah, so that's this. Now next one, thin right? It's again straightforward. Duplicate this one, create this. Basically, go up top in all reduce the size there you go just to add that effect uh, yeah it's like there and maybe hide this off and again we will do the same thing add sales for the label make it discrete and of course we'll have to format the number go to pane oh sorry header i do percent and i do one there you go so you have it ready and then you can do the formatting, hide the headers and whatnot, right? What do we have next? Okay, a big bar and then a thin line going with it. It's, okay. I'm pretty sure you, most of you might have already gotten the idea what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna click on average, click here, make this thin line, make it black. There you go. and. Again, add maybe this here, make it discrete, just so that I have some, basically you can format it however you want the labels to be, you can keep it inside as well. There is no hard and fast rule. It's just like how I did it. So yeah, that's that. Now, this one was something that I had never tried and I learned while doing this, to be honest, the unit progress bar chart. And I really like this, to be honest, like, uh, so this was a good learning for me when I was building this dashboard. 
so, my bad. So what is this? Let me duplicate a basic progress bar chart again, right? Now I need sections. How do I do that? Righty. So the trick is you basically go to analytics, right? Reference line. Put it on the table. Click on the distribution part. Click on pane. Then there comes percentages. Now I'll give you two quick examples. Okay. And then here, what you gotta do is constant and make it one so that it kind of says all of this percent of one. If you'll see, there you go. Let me hide this. Let me hide this. I don't need none of those. We make this white and a thinner line. And let me make this white as well, right? Now, what do I do? Click here. I do format. Yeah. And for some reason, if I don't minimize, I'm not able to select no fill. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out. Why does that happen? There you go. And you can validate that. So what I did was I created a 10% differential ranges, right? 10%, 10 to 20. So 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. 40 to 50, this is 50.32, so slightly over there, right? And now what you can do is, you can also make the distribution smaller. That is how I have it in my dashboard, which is 20, 40, 60, 80. Now you see the lesser. This mm -hmm. is 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, and it's right in the middle. So yeah, that's there. So this is unit progress. There you go, right? Now, what about these two? And any questions so far? I know unit progress is slightly different. Uh, May and Emily? No, uh, we're just answering some quick questions in the in the chat. I'll, I will gently interrupt you <laughs> if there's if there are any questions. Got it, uh, perfect, perfect. Content. I got it, thank you. Okay, so now let's try this one. A progress line chart with circles. So basically, we're replacing a bar with a circle. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what I'll do is I just make this circle. Oh, sorry, not this. I'll make I'll reduce the length there. Make this black, and I'll add a circle there. <laughs> Let me reduce the size a bit. You can either keep the label here, but how I did was I did the same thing. I added here. Made this discrete. And format, percentage, and there you go. You have your another variation of it. And then you can adjust the header and the, take out the borders and whatnot, adjust the fonts. Now, the other chart I have is, it's, it's a bit fancy. Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. So yeah, and it requires shapes. So what do I mean by shapes? So let me duplicate this one. So instead of circle here, you can choose another mark type called shapes, right? And I have a shape, which is this one, this shape, which is what basically the, the chart says. You adjust size, there you go, there you go, just a bit more. Yeah. And put segment in all on colors. There you go. Now what do you need? All I need is my text to be centralized. The middle, I'll make it, yeah, maybe, yeah, there you go. So there you go. And dark mode, I forgot. So format, you can just probably, there you go. And of course, we will have to adjust this to white, this to white. And yeah, there you go. And then you can get rid of these grid lines using the format here, as we have been doing for some of the charts. And then you'll get a better looking graph, something like this. There you go. Now comes the comparison charts. What are these? These are basically when you would want to compare 
two specific years, two specific instances. In my case, I have taken years and I thought, why not cover all of them? What, how you can basically do these comparisons. So we go one after the other and I hope my speed is fine. It's not too fast. And yeah, yeah please let me know if I'm fast in the chat and uh, Emily and Megan, just, uh, just let me know. Got it. Luckily, this Sorry, will be guys. recorded to YouTube, so people can always do, if it's too slow, they can speed it up. If it's too fast, they can slow it down. Sweet. Perfect. Thank you. Alrighty. Side-by-side -side bar chart. So what do we have here? I have, again, segment. I have sales, but I have an ear, right? So let's go here. Okay. So I already told you guys I have created some calculations for you all. So for sales, I already created 2023 sales and 2022 sales. So just a simple calculation. If year of order it is 23, give me the sales. And I did the same thing. There. There you go. Right? Cool. Now, how to achieve that? So you add segment here, right? Now let's play around with some fields in, in Tableau called measure names. What measure name is basically, it's the name of measures you have, and then there is something contemporary to it called measure values, which will have the value of it. So this can act like headers. So you will see in a minute, okay? At this point, it will say no measure value. Why? You will see why, because there is no measure values in the view. I add it here. I just say, like bar chart for me. There you go, you have it. You can add maybe text to it, kind of left line. And there you go, adjust the formatting if you want it by K, like I had already done it for a few. Maybe you can do that. Uh, currency, custom, K, something like this. And then you can, you have a chart ready, right? So that was this. Now comes bar and candlestick. So again, shout out to Andy Creeville. That's the guy who showed me basically how it can be done. YouTube video. And I've tried to use the same names, same keywords that can help you even if you really want to find a, like this, this tutorial is not helping. You can literally Google or YouTube it and then you will get the exact chart you need. So I kept that thing in my mind. Okay, so we basically do the same thing here, but how to add this candlestick feature here. So what this line basically is telling is, what is the difference between 2023 and 2022? And then the actual value. And when you hover over, you see the values there. So this is basically what this is doing. Now, how is that done? Okay, so the trick is, I had 2023 sales here, right? That I did, I just did a copy of it. Exactly the same thing, just do a duplicate. I click here, duplicate it. That's it, right? And then you basically add this thing here, and I'll show it to you why I did that. So the idea is why I did 2023 is because I want in my chart this line to basically be referenced by the latest year. So it should start and end by that. So let me go here, and if I just do a dual axis and do bars across for the timing so do you see it's basically taking the same length for 2023 here and i have changed the alias of this copy to change percent so yeah that's the same thing uh let me do one quick thing here let me sort this i want 2023 up top not in the bottom there you go. right now how do i get that effect for getting the effect you basically click on this Right, you make this a Gantt chart. Gantt chart. Okay, but this is vertical. We need horizontal, right? That's where what I did was I calculated a column called difference. What this thing is doing is sum of sales of 2022 minus 23. That's it. That's all it's doing. And if I just put it on size, there you go. And there you go. Right now, what about the person change text? Now, so we all know the person change formula basically is 
older minus new year by older year. So that's what I have here. Oh, sorry. 2023 minus 22 by 22. So that's the formula I've used. And if I just add it to label and do a quick formatting here, because it's a percent, there you go, 11.7. And you can actually calculate to be the same thing. So what this gives you is basically, it gives you an idea of how you can differentiate between two bar charts and it shows a difference right within that. Of course, there are different variations. You can create like KPIs out of it or arrows around it. But this one variation is something that I've liked a lot. And I think a lot of people have been using this one in this year's Makeover Monday as well. So yeah, this one was a good one. All right, now, we have a few more to go and those should be very quick. Divergent bar chart. So what do I have here? Again, I have segments, but here I took profit. Why? Because for sales, I was not seeing much variance. Everyone, everything was one-sided. And what divergent chart says is, it basically has your percent change value. So basically let's say changes of profit between 2023 and 2022 and whether the change was positive, right? So this is your zero act, zero line. But if negative, it goes to the left. So it basically tells you the flow of your person change. So how this is done, pretty straightforward. Go there. I already had calculated the same thing for profit for 23, 22, sorry, 23. And then this is the calculation I did for you, the change. So straightforward stuff. Segment. Profit change, do a bar chart. And what is this? I just created a calculated field which says if change in profit is greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, it's true. If it's not, it's false. Drop it on the color. There you go. Let me put text labels in here. Let me just centralize it. There you go. And you have it right there. So this is something if somebody wants to show you know, the actual person change values. Uh, and you can basically use this thing. You have to enable the zero line. This, and you can darken it basically if you want to the zero line out here so that it gives the effect to the user, like how how exactly was the sales. So as we see for consumers and home office, there was decent profit in 2023 as opposed to 22, but corporate kind of suffered like a bit. And in tool tips, you can provide much more details and whatnot, right? Now, Butterfly chart. What is it? It looks like a butterfly. So I again, went back to sales. It's basically just telling you the values of sales between 23 and 22, side by side comparison. That's it. So how's that done? This one has a small trick and you're good. So I put 2023 sales up there. I put 2022 sales up there. Right? 22, 23. Now how to get the butterfly effect where this bar goes from here to there and not the vice versa. Click here and just say reversed. Reverse the axis. That's it. Right. Uh, you don't need a dual axis here to be honest, but why not? Right. Right. Yep. And I had one measure name here so that you basically there you go. And then you can just hide the headers and show the text. So 22 and 23 and then then you show the text values within those and then you can basically compare them side by side. And you can do the same thing for the, like the, per, like, I don't know, maybe progresses of, if you have progresses of, let's say, two different measures, you can even try that, doing that. So there are different ways of kind of exploring this type of a chart and why it's called butterfly because it kind of spreads like a wing there. So yeah, that's okay. that. Next few charts are pretty straightforward. So what is this one? Let me just again copy paste my regular bar chart. Oh, sorry, not this one. My bad. Let me just go ahead. Let's start again. 
segment, right? Now, what do I have here? This bar says 2023, and this says what the last year's sales was, right? So I think you've gotten a fair idea at this point. I'm gonna add this hair. I'm gonna add this hair. And I'm gonna do a dual axis. I'm gonna do the entire view. Make everything bar for now. Now, here I won't do a synchronized axis, and I'll let you. I'll tell you why. I just do a Gantt. There you go. Increased. Uh, let me just keep it this and just use this as a target. Very wide. There you go. So this basically tells you the 2023 uh, sales. And here it gives you 2022. So you basically, this is called a bullet chart. So this bullet chart is basically, you have a reference point and it basically tells you how good are you doing. So that's, yeah. So it, it's like an alternative to a grouped or bar chart or a side by side bar chart that we just did here. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Bullet chart. Okay. 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 You got it. And then comes bar and bar chart. That's straightforward. You just play with the size. You make this thing instead of Gantt. Okay. Wait, let me duplicate this. So you make this thing a bar and lighten it up a bit that's it i have never used this one to be honest but it's like yeah you, you can probably use it i like if, if the use case permits i have never used something like this but i've seen a few dashboards at nike where people have used that and the stakeholders like the way how it it kind of interprets the data so that's that bar in in bar now, the other two variations are stack bar chart, the regular ones, and then a person distribution. So what I have here, you have segments, again, sales, but sales by order years, right? So how to do that? Let's do it from the start. Segment, uh, sales, you have a bar chart, and... <clears throat> Let me just, yeah, there you go, righty. And now what do I do with this? Any guesses? Yeah, I just went blank for a moment, I'm sorry. There you go. This is what I did, right. So I just added years to color and that kind of broke my visualization by year. So it's consumer by year, sales is by consumer, like segment and then by years. And that's what it is. It's a regular stack bar chart. Now, oh. all righty. Now the last one. What is this? So this is just saying the person distribution instead of the absolute values, and that is why you see everything is equal length. All of this adds up to hundred. So let me do that. One, two, three, four. You see here. 100%. If you just click one, 28.6. So that's what we do here. So very quick thing. Just duplicate this thing. You do table calculation, percent of total. And in compute using, you would do order date. There you go. Because we are we have order dates in. So. And it adds up to 100, right? So, yeah, this was the last one. Uh, how are we doing on time, Emily and May? Like, so we have 12 minutes left. Cool. Okay. I can then give you all a bonus tip <laughs> that I really wanted to, which is dynamics on visibility. Uh, and does that give you enough time after that, uh, Emily and May? Or yep. That's totally okay. fine. Yeah, you've got you've got the rest of the time. Sweet. All righty. So, what is dynamic zone visibility? So, okay, let me do something. So, this is an official documentation that the deck will have. 
what dynamic zone is. So, okay. Many of you would have had a use case where you have to swap sheets, right? Back in time, we had to create those calculated parameters, trues and false, put in filters and whatnot. Yeah, it, it was possible, but yeah, it had, it was a lot to be honest at that point in time. What Tableau added in 2022.3 is DZN, or that's how they call it, DZN, or dynamic zone visibility. You can basically do the sheet swaps, and there are many other use cases, but I'll be covering sweet shop today. Sorry, sheet swap today. <coughs> oh, yeah. And then with this, all you basically do is you create a parameter, you create a few basic calculated fields, and then you use the dynamic zone visibility feature, which is available on your Tableau desktop, and I'll, which I'll show you how. And the best part is you don't have to adjust the padding or anything in, in the, uh, in the what do you call it? The, the tiles are like horizontal or vertical tiles you have in which you're hiding and showing the sheets. Everything is like, it takes the complete space. This thing is a game changer. I've been using it like in every workout Wednesdays. I get an option to, or even in my workout Wednesdays, every week that I've been building. And it, yeah, I, I dig this feature to be honest. Uh, yeah, so let me just quickly give you an example. Mm, okay, let's take any two charts. Let me take this side by side and, and divergent, right? Oh, okay. I create a parameter called Make selection. Uh, make it like a string, and I'll just add. Let me call it side for side by side and div for divergent, right? And that's it, right? Now I'll create two calculated fields. One would be. this side, we call it the DZN side, right? And create another calculated field I'll call. What was the name I gave? This, I guess. There you go. And this is D Z N div. Okay. Cool. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna play around with these two sheets and show you how D Z N could potentially work. Let me make a dashboard. Okay. This is a dashboard, right? I go ahead. Yep. And then uh, side by side, there you go. Let me add side by side in there. And then I will add sheet number 45 divergent. Okay. At this point, you see both of them, right? How to hide those. Previously, you might have had to put filters true and false and then adjust them accordingly. But now, there's the magic control visibility using value. So for side by side, I would say. Easy inside, and something didn't happen, so I'll have to check what. Do a tip. Okay, wait. I think I know what happened. Mm. I am sorry for this technical up. There you go. <sighs> Side. So this thing will show, and then for this, I'm gonna choose div. Okay, there you go. It's hidden right now. Okay. So what just happened? Let me show the parameter. Uh, make selection. There you go. If I do div comes in if I do this this comes in smooth right so what exactly I did was I just basically created a calculated a parameter of a selection you can do it of either of your choice and then I just created two calculated fields one says if this parameter value is for one chart type and the other is for the other and what it does is 
this thing controls all of this control dynamics on visibility and to be honest i was shocked one time i was doing a makeover monday and i was even able to hide a color legend with this which i didn't know that we can do go it at that level of detail so that's that so this is dynamic zone visibility for you and there are endless use cases like workout wednesdays this year had a very good use case i think it was week 3 uh so yeah i have it on my public profile if you would want to see it has a tag in there yeah so that was the 21 charts and these are the advanced ones that i was not able to cover because of the complexity these ones might these ones have some useful useful links i have for you all to practice dashboarding skills make over monday these are all links you can click on them and once you have the deck uh weekly challenge every sunday night they release it uk time and then we have a week to complete for table calculation tableau calculations and use cases workout wednesdays every wednesdays this is released a challenge and then you have to replicate it and achieve it how it is both of them are amazing i have been doing it this year every week all of them so two dashboards every week then this is a documentation for dzn get started with dynamic zone visibility this is for dashboard inspiration i usually prefer tableau public uh be it a professional dashboard or some personal portfolio stuff this is the current dashboards link that i shared in the chat so that it kind of stays documented with you all the time whenever you need it handy and some honorary tableau visionaries to follow and learn from and ecribel ken flor large kevin flor large the flor large twins chimdi nosu he's so andy was the first one who started the makeover one monday uh, challenge and now chimdi has taken over and every week he and irene and harry bearden are doing the same adrian zinovi i have worked with him in deloitte some time back uh, when i was there tried to nike amazing guy knows a lot of stuff like this guy is super good he's trending almost every day so go check him out jim denner legendary he has probably one of the best person you can reach out to if you have any tableau questions tableau community i think he's the one who usually answers all of them samuel parson amazing tips sara bartlett visionary og in tableau world pradeep kumar ji the king of executive dashboards ever ever need an inspiration just check his profile it's amazing lorna brown she is handling workout wednesdays one of the leaders this year and she is amazing she has so cool tips and yeah that's all i have for you all thank you so much shang this was amazing Ooh. as someone who always is a little fearful of live developments you did so well um these are beautiful you now now that you're not screen sharing you can see all of the positive reception in the yes. chat oh. um this was really great thank you so much for being able to like crank all those out and not a lot of time um that was really awesome and i think we have links everybody to um Shang's Tableau public profile as well as the actual workbook um that he just walked us through um so yeah give him a follow um and then we'll send out some summary information like i talked about about Tableau user group dates i apologize there's construction in my building and it's killing me <laughs> uh inside um there uh we'll send out details as well as a link to the oh my gosh i got to be we'll send out details <laughs> thanks everybody so much for coming thank you for being I'll be here for chatting with you all thank um, you thank you all thanks shane yeah bye